What's up everybody? This is Coach Perello and I have this little video for you on how to use Google Forms for assessment, you know, whether it's an assessment for you to use and or for peer assessment for your students. Uh, this uh, form I'm going to show you, I know I've got some already out on my channel and obviously uh, Google Forms have changed since I've made those and I've come up with this different format to use that I really, really like. And so I wanted to share how I made it so that you could turn around and make it for your students and hopefully make it easier for you to assess uh, with your students. So I uh, start off with uh, my Google Drive, you can see, and I made an assessment uh, folder. And now we need to create a Google Form. So I go to New Form, and I title my form the grade level so it's easier for me to locate. We'll go with second grade. And of course, you know, there it goes, change the title. Here, uh, my first question that I make, I make it as a multiple choice, and I made it for the uh, classes that I have. Now, I divide our grade level, myself and my specialist team, we divide out the grade level to five different groups. Uh, your school obviously do, does something different because uh, I have a schedule where I have three groups at a time. You may have it where you have one uh, classroom teacher at a time. So what I would do here is for your second grade, I would give the classroom teacher's name the name of the class. So this would be class. Um, and then you would name your classes here. So it'd be, it might be Mrs. Jones, it might be Mr. Jones, it might be Mrs. Smith, whatever your class name is. Ours for sake for for me would be A, B, C, D, E. Um, these are obviously the names of my groups. We call them attitude, uh, brave, caring, dedicated, and excel. Okay, so these would be my three classes. So once I have that set up, I usually make this a requirement, especially if it's something I'm using as a peer assessment. That's how I started this. I made it for a peer assessment for the students. Originally, I had this, uh, and I'll tell you, oh, let me, I'll tell you that in a minute. So from there, here's those classes. I'm going to now make a new section. So hit this little equal sign, and it makes a whole new section down here. And from here, uh, you would have the name of that class or that teacher. So this is group A. I'm going to add the question. Now, for here is where I keep it as multiple choice, and I add names. This is where all my student names would be, but these are names of my family, my children, myself, and my wife. If you don't know me, that's their names. Um, and one more child. All right, there's my mini-me. Okay, so, and then I come back up here and say name. Now, if I put name in first, it ends up changing the question to a... Um, a short answer so you can do it either way and just change it back to multiple choice but whatever you need to do I do not require an answer for this because what will happen is if you do that for these every class then would you would have to select the person's name and you don't want to do that uh, and then so let's say that class is done yay all right so now I need to do another one now you can easily go over if you have this on a spreadsheet somewhere uh, you can copy and paste it over. It's fantastic. That's what I did with mine, and it was awesome because we have it on a Google uh, Sheet, and I just copied uh, the names over from Google Sheet per class, and woohoo, voila, I was done. So that's a nice little bonus. If you're going to do that, you can copy and paste it. So this is the braid group. Uh, again, then add a question, multiple choice. I'll show you here. See, watch. If I type in name here, it changes it to short answer. I don't want short answer. I want multiple choice. You can do drop down if you want to as well. I just like multiple choice because it's easier for the students to see uh, the name. So we just make some blah, blah, blah names. Okay, blah, blah, blah names. And I hope that's not somebody's real name. I'm sorry if it is and I used it. All right, so I've got two sections. Of course, I would make one for every teacher. But uh, for sake of getting through the video, we're going to stop right there. I'm going to come back up to my grade level here. And I want to make it so that when they click A, it takes them to the A section. So you're going to hit the three dots right here. Go to section based on answer. So A, I would click on next section. And I want it to go to the A section on the form. I want this one to go to B. And then I would want this C, D, E. But I don't have those, so I can't send it there. All right? And then we're going to scroll on down, and now we're going to come to the bottom of this question here. And, of course, you could do this stuff in any order. This is the way I'm going to help you out. I'm going to create a new section. So let's say I've done all my classes, and now this section is going to be for my skills, my various skills that I want the students to peer assess or I want to use for my assessment. This is where they're all going to go. So I'm going to add a question, 
And for here, I did drop down. You can do multiple choice again. Uh, I like drop down because then it does take a bunch of space up on the form because you know you're going to have 30, 40 different skills that you want to assess. So the name uh, will be whatever skill. So I got catching, and we're going to use uh, throwing overhand because those are the ones I have pulled up on top. All right, so those are my two. Of course, I'd have more than that. Uh, and now we're going to create another section. So each one of these question answers, when they select it, are going to take them to an entire different section. So it's basically one section per skill. So the first one we'll go with is catching. We're going to add that question. And here I like to use a checkbox because when, when I use it for my assessment for the kids, I have them choose which one uh, they, they select a tab that says what they need to work on because my goal at the end of the year is to be able to take the results put them all onto one sheet and merge it uh, with a Google Doc and, and merge it so then the students will get a nice little printout uh, showing what skills they have either mastered or what do they need to use to improve the skill um, and all that so you can see the last one is mastered the skill so now when the students go to that live form, uh, they have to check box, oh yeah, nope, the arms aren't extended, you know, or the ball is not caught with the hands, they, they catch it bouncing up off the body. So the students would check box these. Uh, some other things I did through the, here on the questions was I added some extra questions if you want to, uh, how many times they catch a ball out of 10 trials, or it might have been thrown, how many times did they hit the target out of five tries. Um, what are some, what some critical feedback you would give to students? That would be great for your older grade levels. Um, so then now we have to make another section for our other skill. So we go throwing and then, whoops, overhand. Now what I did on my form is I kept it alphabetical so it was easier for the students to find the different uh, skills that we were working on. So again, checkbox. Now we're going to go to throwing. We're going to copy these all over and you're going to have to bear with me. I know this is the long process right here. <laughs> <clears throat> so, while we're doing that, I would like to play some music for you, but unfortunately if I did that, I would probably get blocked by YouTube. So, you're just going to have to deal with me going back and forth and listen to me talk. Uh, and then we'll do this, and then we'll go here, and then we'll copy, and then we'll go back, and then we'll paste. And yes, of course, I did this with all my skills. And whether it was one I wrote or if I had an assessment somewhere else, I copied and pasted them all over. Can you see why it's better if you could do it all one time, right? Okay, so copy and uh, paste. Paste. Now, from there, let's pretend, obviously, I've only done two uh, skills, but let's pretend I've done all my skills. We're all done. Woohoo! Word, right? So... All done, all done, all done. The other thing I have added, especially for my peer assessment ones, is I added a animated GIF. You know, if you know me, you know I like animated GIFs. Uh, so, at the skill question, there's a little mountain insert picture. So I click on that guy. I go over to my animated GIF that I have. I drag and drop it over, and then, voila! It shows the animated GIF. Now I like mine centered. So uh, get to the middle there, buddy. Now you can change that size if you want to. You can leave it whatever you would like to do. But I like having this because it's a visual for the students that are doing the peer assessment along with the verbiage that they need to be looking at as well. Okay. Um, before we go too much further, we need to go up here to the skills section now. So let's say we've made all of our different uh, sections, right? Again, every section is related to uh, a skill. So new section, new skill. Go again to the three dots here, go to selection based on answer, and from here I want to go to catching because I want it to go to catching when they answer that, and I want this one to go to throwing when they answer that. Uh, the other thing we need to go back up and do now is underneath here, we're going to hit this down arrow, where arrow, click on this guy, and when you the, kid, the students hit select, you want them to go to the skills page. So after every class, you want to hit that down arrow and have a go to skills page. So then it would take them directly to here. Okay, the other thing I did at the bottom of all the skills, 
I added one last question. I forgot to tell you this one, but I added one more question. And this one was a drop down. Of course, you can make it what you want. And this one I will title and go to because, oops, because you may have um, a, an activity would say you're doing volleyball. You want them to assess each other on the overhead set in the under uh, in the forearm pass, you know. <clears throat> so you want, pardon me, so you want them to go back to the skills to, to find that skill again. So, and the other option would be submit. All right, so on there then too, again, I need to hit the three dots and go to based on an answer. So now from here, I want to go back to the skills page. And for this one, I want it to go to submit form page. Okay, so hopefully, I uh, need to double check myself. I think I have it all lined up the way I, I made it before. Obviously, there would be another, there would be that other question here. But um, let's go take a look at the live form, shall we? So come over here, we go to the live form. Here it is, they're going to select a class. They're going to click next and it should automatically take me there. Yay, it did. Okay, I select the person name. Now it should take me to the skills page. Hey, it did. Look at that. Okay, now I select the skill. Let's see if it'll take me to the right place. Yay, it did. It worked. Okay, so then again, when the students are filling out, they would say, yes, they no, they're not doing this. No, they're not doing this. If they're doing everything correctly, I told my students, click the mask, master the skill. This is a part where my students kind of have a hard time, but they, they like to do this. Yep, they're doing all these things. <laughs> no, I want to know if they just mastered it. So uh, sometimes they have to go back and, and delete what all the extra stuff if they know if they marked the kid mastered the skill. And then of course here I can choose. I can either go back to skills again or back to submit. So let's go let's go back to skills. So now we're back at the skill page. Let's go to the uh, throw an overhand so you can see that hey, I made a gift plane. All right. So if they're using a tablet, Chromebook, whatever, that's going to pull up for them. So there's that nice visual. Now of course I don't have those questions down here for you, right? Um, to go back. So, of course, I'll do this and it's going to automatically uh, have me submit to the next, uh, to the submit page. Boom, it's been submitted. So, that is that in a nutshell. So, if I want the kids and they go to another, uh, now they change places if they're doing peer assessment and now the other kid's going. Let's, let's, let's make sure this goes to the B. Just curiosity. Yep, sure did. All right. And now, of course, if you go back to your Google form, you'll notice that there is a response. <laughs> Pardon me again. And if they click on it, then you can see your answers. And here too, you can export it um, right here for to create a spreadsheet. And from there, you can take those answers and use Autocrat and, and merge it with a Google Doc for uh, anything you want to be sent home later. And for those tutorials, I have one somewhere. I know you could do Google Doc, Google uh, uh, tutorials for Google Docs and and, uh, and and Autocrat and all that kind of stuff. So. Hopefully that works. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thanks for watching.